G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So, it's winter in the southern hemisphere and like most aquarium hobbyists around the world, winter is the most expensive time to be running an aquarium or indeed running an entire fish room. The other day, I got my power bill. Like always, I'm always a little bit shocked by the amount that's on that power bill. So I thought it would make a good video to discuss with you guys how much does it cost to run a fish room like this per month. So we're going to go through the numbers, we're going to look at the power bill, we're going to look at my water usage, and we're also going to be looking at the amount of food and how much it costs to feed all the fish per month. So some of you might not be aware that I've had the fish room set up and running for just over a year now. And in that time I've obviously managed to spawn some fish, raise their fry, and sell those fish onto other hobbyists around Australia. Now, obviously when I sell fish, I feel fantastic about it, I feel like I'm making money, then I get the power bill, and it's kicking the guts, and I'm sent back to reality very quickly. Now I'm sure there are some of you out there that probably think I'm making an absolute fortune from breeding and selling fish. However, that couldn't be further from the truth. And the reality is, I'm not. I reckon there'll be a small percentage of fish rooms around the world that run at a profit, and I believe the majority would be lucky to break even. I think the majority would unfortunately fit in the bottom category, which would be running at a loss. Okay guys, power. Let's talk about the thing that brought up this topic this week. On the screen, you can already see some of the outputs that I'm getting from my return pumps. These are the controllers for my return pumps. The return pumps are sitting in the sump. I've got two of them. They're capable of running up to 110 watts. However, I run them at, as you can see on the screen here, around 43 watts each. That's more than enough power to flow all the water to the 20 aquariums you see on this side of the fish room. So we're talking, let's call it about 90 watts of power just for this side of the fish room for flow. I've also got two Eheim Jaeger heaters in that sump. They're just there for backup if the room cools down too much. So in that, there is 600 watts of power, 300 watt heaters each. But they hardly ever turn on. The reason they hardly ever turn on is that this room is heated by an air conditioner that is sitting behind these tanks, just above these ones over here. I've also got lights. Each four foot of tank length has one light. Each light runs at about 50 watts each. These aren't on all day long. They're on for a few hours in the afternoon after I come home from work, and they stay on until about 7, 7.30 p.m. and they turn off. These guys don't need a lot of light, which is great. However, there are lights that do turn on in this fish room throughout the day, so they are experiencing a day and night cycle. So on this side of the fish room, we've got 12 tanks. These aren't connected up together like they are on this wall. These tanks are all run individually, but again, because of the air conditioning in the room, they are heated up. However, like we all know, heat rises, and these tanks down the bottom aren't heated by the room, they are heated with individual heaters. This tank here also has a heater in it, and that's purely because this has my electric blue German rams in it, and they require higher running temps. So these guys have a heater, and these two tanks have heaters because they've got my greedy pair of greedy pairs of bristlenose catfish. Just for those catfish in these tanks here, in these tanks here, they don't need heaters. They can survive at lower temperatures, but they don't exactly thrive at lower temperatures. They're running at about 24 degrees, so that's more than enough for these guys to spawn and grow and be fine. And again, lights. These lights turn on in the morning from around 8 a.m. and supply enough light for this side of the room and my pothos plant, which you can't see on camera. The other thing that's running in the fish room 24-7 is obviously the air pump. I have an LP60 that runs at 50 watts. So a pretty decent air pump that powers air to all these tanks. All these tanks have double-headed sponge filters in them, and the top row of tanks here have du double-headed sponge filters in them. Each tank here has two double-headed sponge filters in it, and that one LP60 is running all of them. So I built a manifold for that air pump with 36 outlets on it. If you haven't seen how I built that manifold, you can watch that video right here. However, that one air pump is powering all these tanks and all the double-headed sponge filters in them. So what was the power bill? Well, the power bill was for the winter quarter, that is June, July and August, and that is the most expensive time to be running a fishery. The power bill was 972 Australian dollars. Now, I'm sure that is a shock to some of you guys, but that includes the entire running of the house. I can look at past winter bills and offset that amount to work out what the pure cost was for running the fish room. And that works out to be about 740 Australian dollars for the winter quarter. If we break that up into months, that's 250 Australian dollars a month to run the fish room during winter. 
Now let's talk about food. I'm going to average a food to be about $40 to $50 a month to feed all the fish in the fish room. And that includes homemade fish food that I make, which lasts a very long time, as well as a lot of boiled veggies that I feed to my catfish. So let's talk about water. I have about 2,000 litres of water on this rack and about 1,000 litres of water on this rack. I do about 600 to 800 litres of water changes per week. Now my water bill is about $400 a quarter. So how much does it cost me to run the fish room all up? Well, that figure varies throughout the year. Like I said, it's more expensive to run the fish room in winter than it is in summer. So I've got two figures for you guys. In winter, it costs me around $420 a month to run the fish room. And that includes obviously power, water, and fish food. However, in summer, it costs me about $290 per month to run the fish room. Now, when we average those two figures across the 12 months of the year, we get an average of about $350 Australian dollars per month to run the entire fish room. And obviously, that again includes electricity, water, and food. So that means I have to at least sell $350 Australian dollars worth of fish from this fish room a month to break even. Please, guys, consider that if you're thinking of setting up a fish room. It obviously depends on what fish you breed. That is an important choice. An important choice of what products you use to power your fish room and how you do your water changes. Another thing I haven't told you about is additives. I spend money on additives to raise the pH and hardness of the water for my Tanganyikan sequence. My water is soft and has a low pH straight up the tap. I also use Seacom Prime, which is a dechlorinator, which you need to use to get rid of the chloramine out of tap water. So all these other factors come into the total of running a fish room. You need to consider that if you're thinking of setting something up like this. Now all the money I do make from selling fish are obviously put back into the fish room. So that offsets the amount of money I have to pay on bills. It's a hobby, I love this hobby, I've been in the hobby all my life and it's just what I do. I do have a full time job thankfully and I don't rely on this as my sole income. So just please guys, if you consider that if you're thinking about doing this for a living especially, now there are a lot of ways that you can make a profit from breeding fish. I'm not going to get into the details of that in this video. That's a video for another day. Today I just wanted to talk to you guys about what it takes to run my fish room. So there you have it guys. What do you think? Is it more than what you thought? Did you think I was making a fortune from breeding fish? Have I brought you back to reality? So just a little bit of a sneak peek into next week's video. We're going to be heading back to Adam's Fish Room. If you haven't seen Adam's Fish Room yet, you can watch those videos right here. He has some absolutely amazing aquascaping and what I think is one of the cleanest fish rooms in all of Sydney. Some of you keen eye observers may have noticed I didn't include all the fish tanks in that fish room tour. And that's purely because they weren't aquascaped yet. But now he has finally completed all the aquascaping in all the tanks in that room. So we're going to be giving you an update on what he's done. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that video. Anyway guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.